Good day. Welcome to Calm Men's Corner. I'm Wayne. Brian. And, well, we're a little sorry for uh, not making last, the last of the show here we wanted to record and get out there. Things got hectic and things get busy, but that's about the extent of the story we are because, well, life takes over and that's just the way it is when you're a common man. Um, <clears throat> a lot of things happened since the last time we had a little rant on on religion and the question and answer thing. And it got some responses back. I got a few emails on to it and that. And, and uh, most of it was just how dare you stuff. You know, well, I dare. Get over it. Um, <clears throat> going to get into a couple things here. I got a couple things here for notes for that. But before we do, let's just do a recap of some of the things that have been happening lately in the media or in the news or around the world and stuff like that. One of the things um, kind of takes my ass a bit because it's stupidest thing to get all worked up about in this day and age in the world we have, we'll go with Jenner. Bruce Jenner slash Caitlyn Jenner slash head of sex change now woman. Rah! Yeah. First she had all the freakazoids freaking out. Oh my god, how could you change from being the man to a woman? Not your fucking problem. Yeah. It's that person's problem. They want to go from peeing standing up in the bushes to squatting, hey, <laughs> or whatever it is, their choice, yeah. not yours. <clears throat> then comes my all-time... Just, I want to fucking throttle people with this here. And since you can't do that this day and age, and maybe some of them are actually bigger than me. <laughs> yeah. Not a lot, but some. <clears throat> anyway, that being said, is this fucking picture going around? Facebook is notorious for it, of course. Um, originally, I thought Facebook was going to be great for bringing people together, like, you know, stay in touch with. In reality, I think most of Facebook is best for now is showing how much of a bigot bunch of assholes people are and letting you know which one's real. So I guess it's good that way, because at least it'll let you know who on your friends list is a bunch of bigot assholes. Yeah. But, anyway, this particular picture, <clears throat> it shows three U.S. soldiers, two of them carrying the third one, which has been wounded. He's still carrying his sidearm in his hand. It says, excuse us, um, we're trying to get through so we can congratulate Bruce Jenner on being so brave. And it has the caption, that picture is brave, Bruce Jenner is not. Or Caitlyn Jenner, whatever you want to, the whole scenario. Well, let's clear something up. Saying that one is brave in that case and the other one's not is sort of like saying pass is not a good fruit because apples are better. Yeah. yeah, they're both food. No, they're not both fruit. Yeah, they are fucking different. Yeah, they are still food. Get over it. Reality check. There's different types of bravery. Yeah. I even had one jackass come out and read, and she uh, she was she was quite adamant with this here, saying it's not like she Bruce slash Caitlin's the first person who's ever had their dick cut apart, sliced, tucked up inside, and turned into a vagina so he can get fucked. And this is the type of language they were using. Trying to, I don't know, maybe going for the shock factor, and therefore people wouldn't think about the fucking redundantly stupid statement that that was. Okay, not the first one to do it, therefore they're not brave. That means every single firefighter that ever rushed into a burning building to save someone else is no longer considered brave because God, people have done it before them. That's right. Every soldier, not brave. Someone's gone before you and died in different wars. Yeah. Every police officer who actually goes into a bad situation knowing it could be bad, but risks their life to help other people anyway. Every paramedic. Every search and rescue member. Every volunteer. Every single person has ever done anything. Every civilian who's ever seen a situation that could be bad and goes in to help anyway is no longer brave because someone's done it beforehand, right? But that statement's the idea, yeah. It's a stupid statement. Apparently. <laughs> and as for one being brave, the other one not, that's great and dandy. Um, it's very clear that people are saying there's not bravery. Has either never had to deal with uh, a transgender situation, or, or you know the male and the female, female and male body trap thing, growing up trying to take on society, be someone that you're not all your life, um, or has never had a loved one or a friend that have gone through it or had to experience it directly. It is a very traumatizing thing. Um, the suicide rate amongst uh, people of that particular sexual orientation or, or, or persuasion here, is very high. It's that way because society doesn't accept them for who they are. As if it fucking matters to you in society whether they're like that or not. It doesn't affect you. If you don't want to be with someone like that, don't be with someone like that. If you're not one of those people, don't do that. Okay? It ranks up there with, like, you don't like abortion, don't have one. You don't like booze, don't drink it. Don't like guns, don't own one. Don't like killing, don't fucking kill people. <laughs> right? Just, anyway, um... Same thing, same-sex marriage, you know. For eons, the suicide rate was retarded because of same-sex relations of that because the way society treated it. Well, it's time for society to grow the fuck up out of the Stone Ages here yeah. and accept the fact that it's not all about you and your own personal little religious beliefs or the way you've been taught. Exactly. Um, it is a very thing. It takes a lot of bravery. 
I mean, yes, the person was filthy rich, therefore probably making it easier in many ways. Yes, it would be compared to, say, common people like you or I. If, you know, or someone in our situations of financial levels, things like that. If common people, or lower class, or lower income people, going through situations like this, it's going to be quite a bit more difficult because they can't just, boom, go in one day, a man come out the next day as a fucking woman kind of deal. Yeah. With and some they, healing and they can't go on talk shows and explain their situation. Right, and they can't. Junk, like, they have to just deal with the bigotry and, and, and the horrible right. comments and the abuse and stuff like that and just pretty much <clears> fucking <throat> deal with it. So yeah, they have it easier that way. On the other hand, when they're with a certain amount of money, level of income and stuff like that, with businesses and family and, you know, things like that, you run the, and investors and whatever, you run the fact that any one of them could walk away and all of a sudden the income level you're used to being at could suddenly put him down to being, or her down to being, living in the same common people that we are now, which would be quite difficult for many people who's never had to do it before. So, your stupidness of, one's brave, one's not, you're not trying to compare a fucking pineapple to a rock and say, well, on the scale of hardness, it doesn't compete. Well, you're right, it fucking doesn't. It's a pineapple versus a chunk of granite, right? Yeah. But it still doesn't mean they both don't exist. Okay, they both take bravery in their own ways. I think the better way to put it is saying the spaghetti isn't fruit because apples are better. Well, you know what? They're both food. Right? They're two different things here, but they're both in the same category of food. In this particular case, they both are take bravery, okay? And you know what? I'll stand by the troops 110%. Right? I served the country. I, I have friends that died with it. Um... I've known people that didn't come home, and those who did come home never came home because they're different, etc. They always are. Um, I 100% support the troops. But trying to compare one to the other is just stupid, and it shows the level of stupidity floating around there in the world, I think. And it's just, it's ignorant. Yeah. Okay? And just because it isn't bravery to you doesn't mean it hasn't inspired or given the given the ability for others that are going through a similar situation that don't have the big amount of money to just go in and have it all done, whatever, to be able to fight on or accept the fact that they are, that it does happen naturally in life. And if you can't accept the fact that it does happen naturally in life, where these things happen, where a man and a woman's body, all their life, or vice versa, etc., then you need to fucking grow up and do a little bit of research and have science and biology and, you know, evolution and everything else really works. Put away your Stone Age book of uh, <laughs> this is how it all is and I can't look for anything different and look to yeah. what's really happening in life. Um, frankly, it just shows <clears> that you're being, a, being an ass, in my opinion. Um, so, that's my little thing on Jenner. I agree. And the stupidness of that. Let's go on a little bit more. Of course, everywhere. You can't turn on anything to do with social media right now and you don't see the Syrian refugees. What's happening in Syria? What's going on in refugees? Canada, 25,000 refugees coming in. Whether you support the war that's happening over there, want to see an end to it, think it matters to you or not, um, let's just clear up a few things on the whole topic. Okay? I just got to put this here. Whether you support it or not, I'm not telling you you have to support Canada bringing in 25,000 refugees. And I don't have to tell you that, you know, you have to be against it because of whatever reason. <laughs> and let's face it, you're probably not going to meet too many more people hard, more hard-ass on religion than me. <laughs> right? Okay, just for the record here, I happen to think the Christian religion is horrible. I happen to think the Muslim religion is horrible. Even worse. Um, in some ways, only because it's more here now as opposed to more moderate like most Christian has gone to be. Uh, but it's still both horrible. I don't think religion does the world any fucking good at all anywhere. I've said this before many times. Hmm. But let's get on this here. 25,000 refugees. Oh my gracious me. Canada is going to turn into a friggin' nuclear waste melting pot of terrorism. Let's just do a little thinking here. Not all Muslims are terrorists. Yeah. Right off the bat. Yeah. Okay? Um, if someone has something that's bad to say about the Muslim religion or the Islamic religion, so that does not make this... Islamophobia, bullshit word that it made up to make tree hugging hippies feel better about themselves. Okay? It doesn't mean that. Um, not everybody of Arabic descent, just for the record here, is a Muslim. Um, there are Muslims from all walks and races and creeds of life across the world. And you have to get the fuck over that. Not everyone from Syria is a Muslim. Not all the Syrian refugees we're going to bring over are going to be Muslim. 
even if every single one of them is Muslim, it doesn't make them a fucking terrorist. Exactly. Misguided in the teachings of their religion, by all means, yes, I will support that 100%. Do we need more religion? I don't think we need a religion in this co in this country, in this world, at all. I think the, the human race would be much better off without religion. I've said this time again, and I will continue to say it. It's a fucking cancer on society of the human race, as far as I'm concerned. But, to turn your back on people that need help, for that reason, I don't really agree with that. But, to each their own, I mean, like, you know, not everyone has to help everybody and stuff like that. That's fine. Let's break it down a little bit more. 25,000. Canada has between 850, or sorry, Nova Scotia ha ha alone has between 850 and 900,000 people living in it. If you were to bring in the 20, all 25,000 Syrian refugees and dump them just in Nova Scotia, it, would, it wouldn't even bring our population back up to where it was 15 years ago. Get over that. It would also, if you had to worry about it being a bad situation, would still be Nova Scotians that live here now, would still outnumber the ones that are coming in, the Syrians there, 34 to 1. I'm still not seeing this as a fucking, oh my god, they're going to invade and take us all over. Yeah. And that was providing, that would be the intent. These are refugees. These are people attempting to get away from a war torn country. You know what? We've all seen the boatloads of people trying to get out. And the, the, the fucking roads and miles and miles and just walking along and stuff like that, right? And it depends on which side you want to be on for the propaganda. You know, oh my god, look at all these here young, healthy men. They should all be fighting. You know what? Not all the young, healthy men went and fight in Canada. Or any for for the for Canada, they're in World War Two and stuff like that, and Korea and everywhere else. So you can't just use that for an excuse for all of it. <clears throat> um, I love seeing the pictures. Why don't you go back to your own country and fight for your own ways? It's because a lot of the cities don't even fucking exist anymore. They're war torn wastelands. Um, yeah. But that being said, take all that aside. Take all that aside. Okay. Every bit of it. If you are someone that is against it or have concerns against it, you're automatically being labeled as a racist. <clears throat> Just to clear this up. I, I might actually go along with that. Raci oh. Racist might not be the wrong word, but there's racist. an ist in there somewhere there's that you are doing. Maybe there's an ist in there for that, there's but it's things. definitely not racism, okay? Because let's clear something up. The religion of Islam. If you are a follower of the religion of Islam, you are a Muslim. That is what it stands for. To be a Muslim is to be a follower of Islam. doesn't mean you're from an Arabic country or you're an Arab of any kind, right? Therefore, it's not a race. Just like it you, is an ideology. Just like you if could be you from Saudi Arabia and still be a Christian. Right. Theoretically. Could Theoretically, you could be. Well, I wouldn't advise you. You might find yourself on, That's what I'm saying, on right? a tight end of a rope. <laughs> but it could happen, right? <laughs> right? But anyway, yeah. um, so that being said, it's not fucking racism. It's an ideology. If you can convert to it, you cannot... If that's the case, by saying, you know, it's, it's, it's racism, well, then I want to be Japanese tomorrow. I think it's fucking awesome. They got, you know, way better health than we got. So that probably what they eat, not what we do. But anyway, you know, it's kind of a stupid thing. I want to be Japanese tomorrow. I can be because, you know, no, you can't convert to a race. You can convert to an ideology, a religion, a belief system, which is what Muslim... And therefore, the religion of Islam, they go hand in hand here with. As opposed to, I want to be an Arabic, or I want to be someone of an Arab descent, or, or, or. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, they're different. It can't be racism. It can be an ism. <laughs> it's probably like to say. There's definitely an ism in right? you know, Um And yes, you can have, I don't know if it's really a phobia. Stereotyping? Stereotyping, Stereotyping is definitely there. That would be the word. Um automatically let's clear something up. I don't like the Islamic religion. The religion of Islam is not good for human society. I've said that before. The Christian religion is also not good for human society as far as I'm concerned. Um, they're both bad. So that's just my statement. If you want to hit me with trying to be a racist, well, learn your fucking terms. I'm not a racist. Um, I wouldn't even say I'm really directly prejudiced against any particular group of people. It's a belief system I'm prejudiced against or biased against and I still don't even believe they should be denied rights like being able to fucking live without being blown up, hunted, or killed <laughs> right? Yeah. now, there's a couple points we can bring in here Hannah's going to bring in 25,000 everyone's like, you, that's like a thousand a day and I've had people send me pictures or these little scales saying that these international airport process more people than that a day themselves, just one airport <laughs> That is true, 
but it is assumed that all these people already have active passports, have visas, have reasons to be in the country. Security checks are already being done by most of these countries coming through. For instance, if you're going from Canada to the States and vice versa, it's relatively assumed that, as a rule, one country's not going to send over all their fucking hate mongrel and terrorists to the other one. We are kind of neighbors and get along pretty good. So if you're processing a lot of these countries or allied countries, it's much easier to process, as a rule, than it is for, say, refugees that don't have any paperwork, ID, and or proof of who they are, what they are, where they come from, or anything else. They have proof that they're human, and they want out of where they are. So, that doesn't work. But on the other hand, the 25,000 refugees that are going to be coming into Canada, or that you know the Canadian government's working toward bringing into Canada, aren't just being plucked up out of the war zone with ISIS fighting on one side, and the rebels whoever group fighting on the other side, and these guys are in the middle throwing grenades or shooting bullets back and forth trying to live. All of a sudden, some fancy friggin' Delta Force... Alcon 4 level chopper comes flying in there, scoops him out of there, flies him over our country, drops him down to our city, says, there, go live, here's a million bucks. Yeah. Okay, it's not happening this way. These people have already been out of the war zone, which is one argument why I hear people, you know, which would be a legit argument saying, well, what's the rush then if we have, they're already out of the danger zone? The counter to that is, if you take 25,000 people out of these refugee camps that are already in another country like Germany or Austria or wherever else, it opens up 25,000 more spaces to get more people out of the fucking areas. It's getting blown up. Um, so there are already some medical checks being done on these people and processed through. There's already some background checks being done, stuff like that. Um, they're not all going to be 25,000 young, you know, Arab or Muslim-based fighting men that come back with military training that were suddenly dumped into our country, stuff like that. It's fear-mongering and war. And you know what? You're just as fucking bad as the other side that's trying to do the war-mongering, okay? You really are. You're it's right. dumb. Um, now, that being said... Here comes my all-time favorite. This beats the crap of the bravery thing. This beats the shit of... This just... Fucking... Irks the hell right out of me, okay? We can't take care of the refugees while we still have homeless in our own country. You have no fucking right in this fucking country to use that for an excuse. Anywhere. From east to west, coast north, through our fucking most southern border. If you haven't been campaigning for the last fucking couple of years or more, trying to get our homeless off the streets, get our vets fucking taken care of, get our poor and needy fed, clothed, and sheltered. If you're using that for an excuse right now, we can't bring in the refugees because we've got our own people to take care of. But seven fucking months ago, your Facebook didn't have a goddamn thing on it at all. You, sir or ma'am, are an asshole and nothing more. You're trying to find an excuse of somebody else's downtrodden and bad luck and poor situation to fucking further your own bullshit needs. That's exactly how I feel about it. And if I offend you, good. You deserve to be offended. Because frankly, your bullshit, piss-poor attitude of let's use this person's bad luck to further my own fucking cause when I'm not actually doing anything myself to fix the problem, yeah. it's a crock of shit. And you know what you deserve for it? A big mouthful of shit to chew on and swallow because you're trying to shove down everybody else's throat. <laughs> That's my opinion on that one. Yeah. Now, if you can't go back for the last six months, eight months, year, two years, and show across your Facebook how you've been trying at all to get better help, better health care, better food, better shelter, better clothing, and take care of our own homeless and needed, then you, sir or ma'am, really have no fucking right to come out with the comments now that you can't take care of the refugees. Because in this country, Canada throws away enough food, clothing, power, and shit like that. Every day, we can take those 25,000 refugees and we can take every single homeless person off our streets and we can take care of all of it. It's corporate fucking greed and the greed of our leaders and the greed of the people that says, not in my backyard and it doesn't affect me, so fuck you. Well, sorry, they don't say fuck you because that would actually mean they're making a stand somewhere. Yeah. They sit back quietly and say, I don't think it's right and then walk off on their own. Facebook That's causing this problem and nothing more. At no point in time does Canada or the U.S. for that matter need to have homeless and starving, exactly. and hungry. Children okay. should not be going without okay. food and medical care. Based on that, actually, the whole idea of immigration is retarded anyway, or refugees is retarded anyway, because if you if you do the research on it, and you look at what the world's uh, poverty line is, something like a billion to two people, two billion people are living in dirt poor conditions. Like, dirt poor. Like, we don't even know what poor is here. Dirt poor kind of scenario. One to two billion. What the fuck do you think twenty five thousand dollars, twenty five thousand people does to that number? It doesn't do a goddamn thing. Not only that, but those billion people every year are making another half a billion people themselves. 
So that 25,000 didn't do a goddamn thing. <laughs> you gotta fix the problems. Don't relocate people. Fix the problems. I guess what I'm gonna come up and say, I've already said a lot here, but I'm gonna say this here about this. If you're asking the question, why are we taking care of refugees instead of taking care of our own? You only are asking half the right question. And that question is, really, why aren't we taking care of our own and the 25,000? It doesn't have to be mutually exclusive. It doesn't have to be one or the other. And the bigger part of the question is, why are you supporting a society that isn't taking care of our own? You don't get to use it for a fucking argument yeah. against something. Right. You're not going to yeah. fix the problem and support it to begin with. Right, yeah. yeah. Right? End of story. Yeah. That's just, that's I'm just willing, the way it I'm is. I'm willing to argue that I don't want people to come into my country, but I'm not willing to argue that the people in my country deserve better. should be better. taken care of. Right. Yeah. Right? Or I'm going to use that for the excuse... But then when that happens, I'm going to stop that argument and move on to something totally different, hopefully never being called to account that I have to fucking take care of this myself and do it myself. Yeah. Okay? You're a hypocrite and you're an asshole. That's my opinion. I've called it out. You got a problem with it? Feel free to write me on to it. And you know what? I've been called names before. You can feel free to call me those too. I really don't mind. So, that's what's going on there. On the other hand, ISIS has managed pretty much very quickly in the last week and a half to two weeks here, uh, pretty much do something that nobody else has ever done, and that's you know, the whole goddamn world pretty much against them. I mean, I don't really know much about France that. hauled out its air force. Most most of the world didn't even know France had an air force. They started bombing targets. Russia has decided to start naming names on who's buying the, the supplies and stuff of like that from and give up its protection against decided to like, one of the countries. Like, like, they couldn't have done that two, three years ago. Well, right? yeah, you're right. But they the did this the only reason these guys they actually hit one. The only reason these guys continue to operate is because that's what they want to happen. Sure, it is. Absolutely. Like, if Russia didn't want that shit to happen, Russia would do something about it. If the states didn't want that to happen, they would do something about well, it. If the world didn't want something to happen, the world would do something about it. Well, they managed to take claim for taking down a Russian airliner. Russia's now pissed at them. <clears throat> Not something you really want to do, kick the sleeping dogs, because they always bite back. Um, pissed off France, which, into itself, for some reason, never really does much for the world, because, well, it's France. It's France. <laughs> No, just kidding with that. But, no, but in serious though, if you actually look at the way the politics work and stuff like that, right, usually doesn't doesn't play in there that much with it. Um, but the world definitely got a little crabby with that one this time. Um, the states are into it. They're bombing their friggin' uh, oil fields without fear of collateral. And, uh, you know, somehow they actually managed to get the two largest sleeping dogs to go in the same pen and start, you know, talking about working together and that was you know Russia and the states so now we're going to do something oh something right. happened to us so now we're going to do something about it so that being said they managed to piss off the world pretty unitedly against it so we'll see what happens now that the oil fields are being blown and the trucks are being taken out and their supply of cash is coming in and a bunch of their allies don't care who's getting named for names and this and that anymore because they're fed up with it so that's great and dandy that's pretty much what I've been seeing in the news or mainstream media. And how could you, if you ever look at anything that's news based or mainstream media, you couldn't miss any of that stuff. Um. So there you are. Yeah. I don't watch any of that stuff. And there are times media. ignorance would be bliss on that. I am very blissful, I think. When it comes because when I do learn about the world, it's just nothing but shit. Alrighty. Um. So. That's this week in Common Man's Corner. Let's move on to a topic. Now that I've gotten my rant and rave and curse and swear out there. Stuff out, yeah. Well, at least the worst of it. I'm not saying I ain't going to drop a few more F-bombs somewhere along the way. <laughs> I've been known to do it. But anyway, <clears throat> um, something that drives me bonkers. In this day and age, we live in a pretty industrialized world. <clears throat> Canada's pretty far up. They're on the industrialized countries. We have resources of the yin-yang. Um... Water, wood, minerals, oil, animal, food, fish, the prairies, the bread basket, you know. We got it. <clears throat> okay? Price of oil right now, 40 bucks a barrel. We're paying what we were paying when it reached 80 some odd dollars a barrel. Why? Cobra Greed, they like it. Can't fight City Hall. Da 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 da. That's fine. <clears throat> but. You get more of that, not in my backyard, and I don't want to have to pay for it. And no one, 
It, it really all comes down to is I don't want someone else to have something for free because I didn't get it when I was that age or when I was younger. I didn't get it before. Attitude of, let's deal with pharmacare. Yes, that big scary word that sends half the fucking people running for fear. Oh my God, it may cost us an extra $2 a year to cover it or something. Or you'll bankrupt us all. You don't understand how finances and money works. Yes, we do. We just no longer give a flying fuck on whether your system of money is working because it's not. It's failing at every corner, and you just keep putting the blinders on as long as you're able to sit back and say, not in my backyard, and it didn't affect me yet. Anyway, let's get on to pharmacare. Many countries have pharmacare, paid for by the state, or the country, or the government, you know. Or at least the vast majority of it. <coughs> um, Norway, Denmark, one of the countries has it. I, I don't know, I couldn't find it here. I went looking for it a few minutes ago. Um, I didn't really do my research completely on it, so I'll throw it out there. Uh, this is not a challenge. This is a, if you have different information leading to it or exactly which country it is, feel free to write in and mention it. Uh, but anyway, they get it paid for. For free. Medication is covered for free, 100%. If you're a, mem- you know, if you're a citizen of the country. Um, they had some problems with it when they first started out with it. In the first three years, I think it was, they, I was reading on it, they uh, fucking went bankrupt, the whole country. But they were covering everything. Viagra was covered. Got a, got a hankering to get an extra heart on. No problem. Government covers it. Here you go. Happier people. Well, I know a lot more people are getting it. They're happier. But anyway, you get the point. Hmm. Um, they're going to put the country bankrupt. And they passed a law. The pharmacies, the pharmaceutical companies, or, or, or people giving out dispensing of the drugs, had to use the most generic or cheap brand of the same medical quality drug available. In other words, if you have the no-name brand, for lack of a better term, coming in at a dollar a pill, and then you had the brand-name Uber U pill coming in at $126 a pill, they were most often contacting the companies that were making these pills and saying, hey, what do I get? Well, I'll give you a 10% kickback if you sell only the Uber U's, and that's what they would do. Right? Next thing you know, fucking pharmaceutical bills through the roof, bankrupt in the country. They pass a law. You must use the generic brand or the cheapest brand. If there are three qual- three levels of pill, we'll say, I'm just using a pill for example. There are three levels of pill. One costs you a dollar a pill. One costs three dollars a pill. One costs $126 a pill. And they're all the exact same medical ingredient into it, you know. Um, you do get that with the generic brand versus the brand name brand, etc. Um, Medical-wise, it's going to cover the same stuff. They were required to give out the generic or the brand name, the cheapest one available. The one dollar one, if the one dollar one wasn't available for whatever reason, the three dollar one, etc. If they chose to give out the more expensive ones, they were allowed to. They themselves had to incur the cost; it wouldn't be passed on to the government. Hmm. So, if there was a six dollar pill and they wanted to give out the one hundred twenty six dollar pill, they had to incur the one hundred twenty six dollar bill per pill onto themselves, as opposed to passing on to the country. And of course, I'm sure they'd simply pass it on to the customer. So the customer was hell-bent on having the exact brand name Uber U. I think it's better because it comes in a shinier box pill or a shot or medica- medication or whatever. They'd have to pay more for it. But every Joe Blow could simply go in and get the common stuff that they wanted. Yeah. And it didn't matter what level it was at. You know what they found out when they passed that law and they switched it? Got better. It got better. Within a year to a year and a half, it was 100% paid for. Uh, now, I ask how the hell is it 100% paid for. I mean, they had to up taxes to get this. So, of course, up taxes, oh my gosh! We're talking dollars a year from every citizen as opposed to... Um, as opposed to... Uh, yeah, yeah. What was, what was before for a bill. And that's really not that big a deal. But what they found was the preventative maintenance side of it. Just like working on your car. Yeah. If you wait till your oil light comes on, then you wait till your oil light goes out, and you wait till the motor starts knocking and banging and puts a rod up through it, <laughs> yeah. it's a lot more expensive than it is to pay for the fucking oil changes right. to keep the car running. Right. Well, it's the same idea. Example being, someone that stops taking their meds because they're poor, or they can afford to have heat for the winter, or they can have medication, not both. Uh, people will, you know, put heat on and food on the table for their kids as opposed to take their own meds and stuff like that. And what they found was, they're still going to get sick. They're going to get worse. That's why the doctors are prescribing these medications to begin with. And then, man, massive heart attack, we'll say. 
hospital ride in, air lift up halfway across the province, open heart surgery, seven hours on the table, you know, six weeks recovery, nurses come to the house to take care of you, hordes of medications. You start adding up all those costs. And that one scenario for that one person, you could have gave them all the medicine that person needed for 10 or 12 years at the same cost. It's just that one ball of, sh yeah. of, of hell that happened. So what they found was, because um, of the preventative maintenance alone, the worst conditions that develop weren't developing. So someone got slightly high cholesterol, they give them the stuff they need to get rid of the cholesterol now and start breaking things up, as opposed to waiting another 10 years and then also now it's open heart surgery or bypasses and stints and balloons and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, so by doing that, they found that preventative maintenance was quite a bit down. Yeah. And I say preventative maintenance like it's a car, but you know what I mean? It's a human body. It's the same, same idea. idea. You're taking care of it. People who didn't feel good weren't afraid to go in and try to... Uh, Get the medication. Get the medication and get the doctor. Because, like, like in Canada, I mean, I go in, I get taken care of. Yeah. Right? So you're not holding off everything. I go to the hospital, I get taken care of. Great. I wait six to eight hours to get in to see a doctor, because that's the way it is around here. But you get in, you see a doctor, they write a piece of paper onto you, they hand it to you. They don't even give you your first dose anymore. This is what you need to live. This is what you need to get better. This is what you need, whether a blood infection is going to rip through your body and kill you. Go buy it yourself. Once they hand that piece of paper to you, it's over. They're done. Your free is over. Now you're going to go pay with your asshole. Now, some people freak out. Well, you can never do free. Bunch of freeloaders. Da, 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 da. Right? It's going to happen. Well, get over it because most people are going to be able to benefit from it in their lifetime. So here you are in this country, and, and they're talking about, you know, well, it's going to cost way too much money to provide everybody with their meds. What they're really saying is, I don't want to possibly pay for anybody else, but I still want free for myself, or I still want because I'm in a position to take care of my own right now. Uh, well, get over it. If you go with the cheaper and you go with the, it takes away the power of, of, like, of companies to be able to say, I'm only providing this, even though there are cheap alternatives, etc. Um... It would come around a lot. The preventative, like I said, people would, in the long term, you wouldn't have as much money going into wasting for things that could have been prevented. Example being, you get a flat tire, you stop, you put a plug into it, it costs you like 12 bucks, you fill up the tire, and away you keep going. If you keep driving down the fucking road on that flat tire and it rips apart, ruins your rim, ruins your tires, ruins your rotors, ruins your pad, you know, pulls you off in the fucking ditch, blows up your car, it's a lot more expensive to fix. Same idea with medicine and Medicare, right? Yeah. So, in reality, the studies are there for it. Other countries have it. Now, just, just to bring this into some kind of perspective here a bit more, um, let's go with Sweden. Sweden pays uh, copay. It's called, well, Canada has copay. If you're a part of the lowest income possible in Canada, et cetera, you can, and you apply for it and the right paperwork's done, et cetera, et cetera, you can get into it so that you only pay $350 a year for your medication, prescription medicine. After that, it's covered for you. If you make a few thousand dollars more than that, then you have to pay a little bit more than that. And you know, if you get twenty-five thousand, you have to pay a lot more than that. And you know, up thirty thousand or forty, you have to pay even more. And you know, et cetera, et cetera. You get paid for all of it. Why shouldn't that be that way? Because it doesn't have to be. If you go to Sweden, it doesn't matter if you're rich, top one percent, you're middle class, the thirty percent, or you're in the lower income bracket, like sixty-nine percent. Um, of the country, you pay $350 a year. That doesn't mean you pay the first $350 and then it's free. You, you co-pay even. So if you suddenly get a prescription that's going to be like $300, that's a lot for most families to be able to shell out. You'd have to pay like 100 bucks for it or $150. And then, if it's, especially if it's going to be an ongoing treatment thing. If it's not, if it's a one-time, get a prescription for a blood infection or get a prescription for a bad cold or whatever else. You got to pay the full amount, forty bucks, fifty bucks here, until you hit the three fifty. Once you've hit the three hundred fifty dollar mark, done. It doesn't matter if you make seven grand a year, 
$75,000 or $175,000 a year. You pay three fifty dollars a year, and that's it. It covers the cost for the most part of medications across the country. That's what you should be. All right? Germany, they only pay between 6 and $12 a prescription, flat out, no matter what it is. $1,600 prescription. Six or twelve bucks. You know, sixteen hundred dollar prescription. You know, I think the whole problem with the the whole system is that it's a for profit industry. It is. So public health should not be a for profit industry. It should be just profit or non profit benefit well, of the public. I, I understand I mean, too. Like that's all it really is. It is a pure benefit to the public. So why should it be a for profit? Because it's not just like the companies, anyways. for instance, that are doing this. I don't care about the company. Do use the money that they make from selling the said product. To pay for the research and study of other products that, that can, are needed, that can still be nonprofit. That can still be nonprofit. It's it still be going back it's into it, right? right? I mean, private individuals should not benefit from this at all. Really, that's how I look at it. And then when you knock out their cuts, well, the price of everything goes down tremendously. Yeah, yeah. It should be a nonprofit organization. Period. Public well, health. I think Switzerland. Switzerland has to have. You have to pay for. Uh, for uh, medical insurance. It's a set amount on your taxes. Canada pays the same thing right now already in your taxes. It's part of your income taxes and your regular taxes and else they're already there. You're already paying for the same thing. The only difference is when it comes to Switzerland, they actually have a chunk on the taxing says you pay this much money in, in the story and you get your public um, insurance, health insurance. You must start paying into it within uh, within three or four months of living in the country. you got to start paying into that. But... It's the same thing as we're paying with our taxes now. Anyway, we already are paying the exact same amounts. They're just calling it differently than we do. Um, but most of the prescriptions that are issued out in Switzerland, for instance, it's I think it's four dollars for a third. No, England. Sorry, England. Sorry, the UK. Switzerland has it. You got to pay for the insurance, and most things are covered for you. Then you get like the UK. Um, they have the insurance of that too, with it and all that stuff. And it's like. Four dollars for a thirty-day supply and ten dollars for a ninety-day supply of most medications that are needed. Now, not everything's going to be covered between the four and ten dollar differences, and there are exceptions, etc. Um, but even then, on those exceptions, are still the copay part of it. Right. So, I mean, like for instance, if if you were really hell bent on making sure that those lazy buggers that live on a low income, da da da, bullshit that goes around society, usually those by those who have the cash, yeah, and also when they find themselves not the ones with the cash, they're screaming the loudest on. Should be getting more support. Yeah. But anyway, um, just make it a set across the board $5 prescription. You will pay $5 a prescription no matter what. Initially, um, if you're on, you know, that's just across the board. Everyone pays it, whether you're in the top 1% or you're in the lowest percentage. And then you can work it out that if you're in the lower half of the percentage of, you know, incomes, et cetera, in Canada, maybe you do the copay thing where it's up, you only pay $5 a prescription up to three fifty, and then it's free for you, and then everybody else only pays 5 bucks. It benefits everybody that way. It'll benefit those of needy income and lower income a lot more. And the preventative side of the maintenance, like I said, of being able to take care of the biggest part of our population would be healthier, therefore less of a burden. I mean, it's not cheap to have someone sitting in the hospital for two weeks with pneumonia in the lungs because they couldn't afford the antibiotics they needed or or, or whatever it is, right? Um, Medical staff, eating staff, heat, lights, room, taking away from somebody else who needs it more. Or, or is in there for something that can't be prevented by simply taking your pills at home, etc., medications, etc. These things can be labeled as a burden. They're a burden that we all should willingly endure as a society because you've got to take care of you know, your own and anybody coming in. I disagree. I'll we'll continue. Well, we're going to get that in a minute. But um, there's no need for most of it to have to happen if people didn't have to choose between heating their house eating, driving, or being able to provide for their family or themselves or whatever else, and or taking their meds. That's only at one level of income. I don't care who you are and how much money you're making, not having to pay large amounts of money for income frees up that money. You can do something else with it that you choose. And it would go right back into society. Unless you're the top 1% or something like that, which are sitting on hoarding hoarding of hundreds of millions and billions of dollars, etc., right? Um, any dollar saved, let's face it, if you're living under sixty or seventy thousand dollars, if you manage to save five grand in medical expenses, we'll say in the run of a year, just to pull that number out, five grand, it's not like they're, ooh, I got five thousand dollars, I'm gonna put it on the shelf and never touch it again. Yeah. They're gonna spend it back into society somewhere, whether it's paying off bills or buying things they want or need or family vacation or whatever. It's going back in, the government's gonna get their taxes anyway out of it. 
The only difference is the level of living is going to improve for all involved. There's really no need for it. I mean, it's not going to bankrupt the country. Other countries are already doing it. Germany, like I said, does a cost share. There's only so much prescription. Austria, Australia, New Zealand, they all got them. And most people in this country are usually arrogant enough to think that our country is better than most of those. So, mm-hmm. if we can have a quote-unquote, and I'm not saying it, but, you know, a lesser country, or one not as good as us, or whatever, do it, why the hell can't we? Why are we being shown up? Exactly. Right? Um, really, just... There's no reason why it shouldn't be able to happen. Um, and you know what? If you want to do certain surveys and certain studies and crunch certain numbers, you can make anything look like you want it to look like. That's just the way it is. Survey of a thousand people, seven hundred people support this. Yes, well, you actually surveyed five thousand. You just chose the seven hundred that agreed with you, and three hundred randomly chosen amongst the other four thousand yeah, plus, yeah. and said seven out of a thousand. Well, you're right out of that thousand exactly, but give the whole picture, right? So I don't know. I, I just don't understand why. And many other countries have it so that the pharma care was there before the hospital side of it was there. Like, for instance, we have free Medicare, yeah. right? You know, you go to the doctor, you're taking care of, you don't pay outrageous fees, et cetera, et cetera, or at least for the most part, you know, you get some things now. But um, a lot of countries had the pharma care long before they had the hospital side of it. And then you get Canada, like, charging, you know, we're going to the hospital side of it. Wonderful. When it comes to the pharma care side, well, there's just too once much you leave profit. leave the hospital, yeah. Yeah, once you leave the hospital, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Um... And then, of course, the best thing about that is, all right, I've seen you for five minutes. Here's your prescription. Good. See you later. Now it's somebody else's problem. Yes, you're gone. Yeah. Go pay Go pay for it or die on your own up to you. I don't care. Like, it's just really not the way I think you should be doing things. Um, other countries can do it. How come we can't? Really? And if anybody tells you the excuses like, well, we're not the other countries. Look what they have to do. Look at the higher taxes. You know what? They do pay slightly higher taxes in one way than we do in other ways. Oh, they get billed for the medical insurance side of it or whatever, which just goes to the government that they use the money to buy the drugs anyway to distribute out, etc. They pay the bill. We're paying for it anyway. The only problem is it's all going to the administration staff right now as opposed to covering the medications and drugs and stuff, right? So, frankly, I think we have too many administration positions. If we can't take care of the people we need to take care of, then maybe we shouldn't be putting so much money into so many pockets. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Oh. But that's just me. Um, so what do you mean we should be taking care of uh, our people? I think it's not so much that people should pay in to do all this stuff. It's just it's a public service. The government should be paying for it itself. And I don't mean by taking my fucking money and spending it on things. I mean the government should be using the monetary system correctly to pay for things without taking that out of my pocket. It can be done. But, I mean, the we, we, don't, we don't really have to pay for those public services. Those public services can be paid out of money that the government itself creates. It doesn't have to come out of your pocket. It doesn't really have to come out of my pocket. But it's not the system we live in. It isn't. But you know what? There's already enough money in the system being taken out of us yeah. to cover those To cover it anyway. anyway. Exactly. And right. like I said, and if you're really worried about it, make it like a $5 or a $10 no, per s- prescription fee paying, or something. Stop paying that national debt we owe and see what we can suddenly do, like. That we could pay for a lot of things if we stopped doing that. Yep, there is that. <clears throat> so what you're saying is, we don't, it's not that we shouldn't be taking care of the people. We shouldn't necessarily be taking care of the people at the expense of other people. At the expense of others. Okay, right. that's fine. Yes. That's fine. Yes. I was going to say, me, clarification. Me, me and you may have had a few words here to go. Just put that <laughs> yeah. a little heat in the sky. Yeah, no. And that, by all means, I don't mean a socialist others. country where everyone get, you know lives for free and happy and da da da. I'm saying, at no point in time should things like Medicare should be had to be covered. Yeah. Right. Um, now. Last person I had a discussion with, we were driving around a bit, I don't want to throw any names. Um, they come out with, and this is this is kind of a, a, a silly way to counter an argument. And that is, for the mutual exclusion of one to the other, etc. Well, if that's the case, I also think internet should be a service provided for free, or basic power should be provided for free people. Uh, now, we yeah, agree with that, they, it should, they be. should be. There should be a certain amount of power per household. I can, you can, really, I can, per really, argue the, I can really argue the power one, too. But. Yeah, I agree with that, um, especially since they make it mandatory, you can't move into your house unless power is hooked up and, because of safety factors, yet they can cut off your power anytime they want. Yeah. But they're making it now unsafe to, for my house. Like, anyway. Yeah. Um, they said, well, you have to do all of it. Well, you don't have to do everything at once. It doesn't have to be all or none of everything in one shot and just 
throw everything away. You can do things in stages, but I think you shouldn't have to exclude one fight because the other one's not happening. Right? Like, do you agree? Getting cheaper medication for everyone across the board better would be good? Well, yeah. Well, then fight to get that. And then once that's done, go right into fighting for the next thing that you think should be like POW, cheaper power, power, or, or a certain amount of power per Canadian across the board is free. After that, if you choose to use more, like there should be a basic plan or a living. But anyway, I wasn't getting into I was getting into the drugs. Um, all but the drugs, huh? But no, seriously, though, it should be there. Um, it is an industry, it is a multi billion dollar industry. It, you know, pharmaceutical companies make huge money. It should, um, it should be non profit. It's a public service. Well, it's usually public money that gets them started and gets them going, and then all of a sudden it becomes private. On top they make of it. A zillion on top of it, it right? right? But that being said, um, but no, I really don't think playing with people's life. Yeah, for money. For money should be, you know, a legitimate thing. It's definitely something that goes against humanity. Uh, for instance, everyone has the right to live in the fight for life. Unless the guy standing on that side of the counter wearing a lab coat has the pills you need to live, yeah. then you're not allowed to fight to get it. You have to simply accept the fact that you're dirt poor and could die without it. Unless you can take the time and do all the bureaucratic red tape and bullshit and paperwork. And then maybe you can get the meds in time. And they're allowed to stare, literally hold the antidote to what's killing you and say, no, not unless you're rich enough to buy it. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Like, there becomes an issue with that. And I really think that we need to find a way to start taking away those control factors and people would spend more time into advancing technologies again. For instance, with the pharmaceutical company right now making all the money the way they do, in the last 10, 15 years, <clears throat> there's been relatively, relatively little breakthroughs in new medications. There's simply been revamping of old medications, make them a little better, drive the price up, horrendous amount of money, and then re-release them and make you know, another billion dollars that they can't spend because there's just too much fucking money, to, fictitious yeah. money to spend. But anyway, yeah. um, if you put it down that it was a real big competition game where everyone had to use the generic brands, et cetera, et cetera, then all of a sudden there would be new driving forces on to be the one to find the next breakthrough because that's where the big money would be. You can charge what you want because you're the only one with it. And then that would be the generic brand because you're the only brand for so long, et cetera. Yeah. But right now, they simply come up with revamping the same thing, up this a little bit, down that a little bit, you know. Add an a to do it. Whatever it is. And then all of a sudden, you know, new big price and away you go again, right? So I really think that's, in my opinion, um, just like taking care of a vehicle or, or anything else, a little preventative maintenance can go a lot further than having to buy a new tool every single time or a new car every single time something little breaks yeah. and you simply don't bother to fix it. Yeah. And that's what's happening in our society more and more. I don't think, in actuality, based on the other countries, it didn't drive their taxes way up. It didn't drive the national debt way up. And in some of the countries, it actually broke even or made it cheaper on the medical system because they weren't going through X number of heart surgeries a year. They were going through sure. a full third less. Yeah. And for every one open heart surgery, they got to bring them back on the table and da 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 da, da and all the specialists. Else, right? Well, not just that, but the one cost, you add up all those costs, it's the same thing as giving the person the medications they need to prevent it for like 10 years. That adds up in the first 10 years, you know what I mean? If you buy all that, like, I mean, like, that would add up in a hurry. Yeah. Considering some people had these heart attacks like that three, four, five times in a decade. Yeah. If you could have prevented it for those 10 years with the proper meds, right from the beginning. I'm not saying every case is like that either. This is not a, a blanket statement of it would all be hunky-dory and peaches and fucking flying doves and pretty rainbows in the sky. I'm just saying, though, like working with any other vehicle, if you don't do the oil change, your car fucks. Well, same idea. Um, and there's no reason for it. Like I said, you get countries that are doing it all over the place. They're already doing it, yeah. Why can't we? Oh, wait a minute here. We're supposed to be a leader of nations when it comes to, you know, moving forward and doing stuff, yet we're so ass backwards and behind the times on so many of these things. Reminds me of an old job I used to work at. <clears throat> we used to work with a partner that was, at the time when they started up, they were the greatest on the planet almost. They were the best company on the planet for what they did. But they stuck with that mentality and didn't, stay on things. They didn't continue to improve. So 10 years later, they're now at the bottom of the barrel because everybody else passed them by because they thought they were the man and they had all the, everybody wanted. But they just stuck with that mentality. They didn't improve and that's all we really did. We said, hey, we got our health care. We got our Medicare. We're doing great. We don't need to improve. Meanwhile, all these other countries are slowly catching up and then passed us right on by because we're so happy where we are. Like, yeah, We are a great country, but 
We could, oh, we could easily be better. We could easily be the best at, at all of it. We simply just don't. We just think that because we're already so good, we can't improve. And it's like, well, that's, that's bullshit. Well, it's either There's that, always room for improvement. That or someone at the top or somewhere along the lines, thinking along the lines of, we don't want to be the first, we don't want to be the last, you kind of want to always be in the middle, let somebody else do the hard work and test it. But there comes a time when you have to look over and say, okay, I'm either stepping out in the rain and getting a little wet, but getting where I got to be, or I'm staying inside drive and never seeing what's on the other side. Yeah, like, you know, exactly. You can't always just coast along with it. So, we're going to wrap that up there for today. Um, that was Common Man's Corner for this week. We got a bunch of screw yous and everything else in there about different topics. Feel free if you really want to write in, give your opinion on it. I'd love to hear it. You know, the email's there. Comment on the shows. Um, believe it or not, there's not some big kind of space alien corporation out there that's looking to gather up all your data and, and, and being able to use it against you to take away your brain waves later or something like that. You are allowed to comment on YouTube, make an account. It doesn't cost you. You know what I mean? You're not going to be suddenly taken away later to the slave mines because, you know, you owe YouTube somehow for making comments and making an account. Feel free to write us and stuff like that. Um, we'll comment back onto it. Um, we check it off and stuff like that for that. Um, when you're ever, whenever you happen to see something like that on there, just so you know, if you do make a comment, okay, if you get a B or a T in brackets at the start of the sentence, we're both used in the same common man's corner one, um, but it's for Brian or Wayne and stuff like that and things like that. So, um, yeah, feel free to write us. Email us, whatever else. If you get questions, you get comments, you get shows, you or topics you want covered. If you got something you really want to say or call us out on it, hey, have at it. I love nothing more than going back and forth. Do it. And uh, there you go. Hopefully, you got something to think about now on both sides of the both sides of the fence when it comes to everything from bravery and refugees to yeah. Medicare and just how we should really be looking at the world. Anyway, I'm Wayne. I'm Brian. And this is Common Man's Corner.